back, everyone. This segment is brought to you by AJ Fernandez Cigars. Cigar connoisseurs are already raving about this exquisite cigar, which pays homage to Christopher Columbus' discovery of tobacco during his expedition of the New World. The New World cigar is a medium to full-bodied cigar, showing off the kind of exquisite construction that is expected by master blender A.J. Fernandez. This gorgeous box press cigar features a delicious dark chocolate Nicaraguan wrapper that houses a blend of Ometepe, Condega, and Estali filler that is bound with a Jalapa binder. Once lit, the perfectly balanced and refined New World gives off a beautiful billow of smoke and hits you immediately with some spice and citrus flavors. As you begin to lose yourself in the rich aromas of New World, the flavors become more complex and begin to express hints of hazelnut and coffee. The New World is a first-time collaboration between A.J. Fernandez and his father, Ismael Fernandez, which really makes the cigar stand out in the A.J. Fernandez line. To commemorate this union of father and son, A.J. is offering to you this masterpiece at around an MSRP of $6, unheard of for a cigar of this caliber. A.J. Fernandez invites you to embark on the journey and smoke what he guarantees to be one of the most talked about cigars of the year, The New World Cigar Journal's number one cigar of the year. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geeks show. We're going to turn it back over to Will, find out what else he's been smoking. Looks like you did some more Selección in España. Yeah, I forgot I had this other one in there. I completely brain farted. No um, worries. I had left this one out from the week before, but I wanted to talk mm. about it. And this is the, there's another size that came out for Casa de Monte Cristo, the Fabulosos. Um, is it fabulous? Th- it's fabulous. <laughs> it, it really is. It's, so this is the biggest one to come out with. And I was just talking about how I didn't really care for the Robusto. Mm. And along comes this 7 by 54 of mm. this blend, right? It's like a big Robusto. It's a big Robusto. It's almost like almost like a almost a double Corona. You know, it's almost it's, Yeah, we don't talk about there's not a lot of people releasing double Corona sized cigars. No, I, I, it's somewhere between it. Yeah, it's somewhere because be, it's not the, a Churchill. It's a larger ring gauge than a Churchill. Churchill, right. And I looked at this and I remember um, I was talking to this guy named Craig, who's from Casa de Monte Cristo, and we you know, we we tend to just exchange messages a lot. And I was like, "Really?" I'm like, "So I sl- I smoked this thing, and this was actually something I meant to talk about last week, and I didn't have it in the notes, but I want to mention. It. This is one of those cigars. It's completely different than any of the other Espanas I've had, but it's very very good. This is probably the most different one I've had in that this was the smoothest Espana I ever had. It had a very creamy finish on this cigar. I couldn't get over how creamy a finish it had. So I was pinging the guy from Casa de Monte Cristo. I said, let me tell you, these, this and the Belly Lance are smoking, which is their two cigars again that they got. Yeah. Th- these are smoking as different as can be. And he only sent me one of each of these, so I didn't have anything else to baseline it off of. And he said, that, Will, they're, they're definitely different. Um, yeah, the blend's the same. They've done some tweaking. But this one was really, really good. Um Again, it's an 1195 cigar uh, in boxes of 10, but I actually like this one better than the Belly Lance. And I, I was really surprised. I'm not saying it's Bell of the Ball of the line. I'd still give that to the Corona, but this is a box worthy cigar um, at the price and um, just the smoking experience. I will say this you know, it's a little more dialed back too than the rest of the line. So it's more of a medium to medium minus. Mm-hmm. It's not a very strong or thick cigar. It's a cigar. It's 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 the Espana I probably could smoke in the morning. Nice is where I would say about uh, that. But I, it's a little I big for morning now. smoke too. Yeah. And yeah. This is a direct store release. Yeah. Topqualitycigars.com. You can yeah. get them from. Yep. Um, if you're in Chicago, go to uh, Casa de Monte Cristo. Tell us Stogie Geeks sent you. They were very nice. Uh, they've been very supportive of us, and uh, nice. You know, appreciate it. Awesome. Uh, yep. I smoked the uh, Ashton Symmetry Bellicoso. Mm. And uh, it was a recommendation. I want to try and go back and try some of the Ashton uh, Symmetry. John, the manager next door, is, is a big fan of this blend. And he says, you know, it's aging really well. I tried the Bellicoso. I, I, there was a flavor profile on this cigar, Will, and I'm attributing it to the size. And I'm, I'm really keen to try other sizes in this blend. In, in this size, it was one of those things where... You know, you say sometimes Bellicosos isn't the size for you. And in this blend, it, it wasn't for me. I, I felt like I had to keep clipping it. Like you would kind of get um, some tar buildup and then have to clip it again to where I almost had to clip it where there was like no torpedo left on it uh, to get it to draw consistently. And I think that contributed to the flavor experience. It had this kind of like almost like a chalky and citrusy kind of profile to it. 
It just didn't appeal to my senses. I'm, I'm reading this was a try one, see if you like this particular size. I think this is going to be a, a, a fantastic blend. It just has all the makings of it. Um, but this size just did not do it for me. And it, they, it comes in a, a ton of other different sizes, probably five other sizes, right, in this blend, Will. Um, and, and this one just didn't do it for me. I haven't had the Bellicoso, but that's been, you know, I when you have a Bellicoso like that, and you basically have to clip the whole thing off. It yeah. does lead to issues. Absolutely. I will say some of the other characteristics, namely, I keep saying it's going to come around that blend. Mm. Um, I haven't gone back around to to v- validate that yet. Is what I'll say. Right. Um. So, but but that was kind of like my feeling. But I haven't had the Bellicoso or that one. Yeah. Yeah. I think when I first smoked it, I sensed a little youngness in it too. So uh, I'm trying to revisit it. So. I'll try some different sizes and we'll review them on the show. Yep. Back to you, Will. Um, so this is a cigar you smoked a few weeks ago that I'm getting around to. It's the uh, 1875 by Romeo y Julieta in the Tres, which is the Toro size. Nice. Um, and I remember you, you you smoked this one and you said it had potential, is what you were telling me. I remember mm. you, you were talking about it. Um, it's an interesting cigar. It's got an indonesian shade wrapper which really doesn't look like a shade wrapper but it, it it looks more like a you know habano wrapper but i mean color wise it's an indonesian shade wrapper is what it's called it's got uh, dominican piloto and aged uh, dominican allure um it's actually made in honduras um you know it had it wasn't a bad cigar it had no it had a nice sweetness to it, it had some woody notes I thought the spice ramped up on the cigar as it went along, and, mm. and the spice got more complex as it went along. So it started like a very generic pepper spice, and I was almost getting a little of these Asian type of notes. And I, I, I actually normally don't look at other reviews un, um, until I'm done. And I, once I was done with this and reviewed it, I did look at a couple of others, and I noticed a few other folks got that. It's a good cigar. It's a, it was a fine cigar for six fifty. The problem I had with the cigar when I kind of just started looking at things, I started saying, "All right, are there?" All the cigars that are six dollars and fifty cents um, with a similar profile that are better, and the answer I says yes. I, I can come up with other ones that were better. This one just didn't top that. So, you know, it, it based on that, I kind of went and said it's a try one. Yeah, not a, you know, certainly it's not. You know, you you might like it. Um, and see, but again, I think I can name six fifty cigars out there that will probably be. You know, fibers to you know even higher. So mm. that's kind of where I was going. I kind of used a baseline with that cigar. Um, I smoked another uh, Leon Jimenez Prestige in the Churchill size. So I, last time I smoked in the Corona size, and I was really impressed with it. Um, the Churchill, don't get me wrong, it's good. It's a very different smoking experience I found in the Churchill. It's got some different flavors. Again, it's kind of one of the themes of the show is that different sizes have different flavor characteristics. And this one, the flavors were um, amped down a little bit in this particular size, making it a much more mild cigar to smoke. Um, And it's a mild blend to begin with. And I think, you know, for whatever reason, maybe it's just filler to wrapper ratio in this Churchill uh, is a little higher. Um, So I still had it as a fiver. I think in the Corona, um, I, I believe I rated it a little higher. Uh, I definitely like the Corona better in this blend. I think this is a very strong offering, and your 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 um, mild cigar in that medium kind of bodied, fuller flavored offering. I think they've done a great job with this blend. Um, the Churchill was good. Again, I like the smaller sizes in the Corona a little better. Yeah, I think that's I may a, still have a, a robusto to try as well. Yeah. That's a cigar. That's a cigar. Um, I gotta explore. I just haven't seen it. Yeah. Did we say we didn't send you some of these? Did we? I gotta see if he did put one in there. He did send me some La Auroras, which I yeah. I, I know you have a tough time finding them, so I had him send you some. I was yeah, away. Nestor's like fine down here. Nestor's like a fine. The La Auroras are tougher. To find. Okay. Interesting. So I was very appreciative. There's some one elevens in there. Um. So I was I'm excited about that. Yeah, I guess, you know, I'm kind of spoiled. I can walk next door and pretty much get any La Aurora cigar that I want. Yeah, I mean, he's so. just the, Todd is the biggest La Aurora probably retailer around. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. So, yep. yeah, this is a, a new a new offering, and I'm, I'm really liking it, um, especially in that Corona size. And uh, we'll get back on the Robusto as well. I think I have a Robusto Tubo as well um, that I have to review. So I bought I bought at least one of every size to try. So, yeah. Excellent. Will, back to you. 
Um, so before I get to my last cigar, I got a gadget, and it kind of ties in with this yeah. last cigar. Um, Love gadgets. So let me see. Hopefully, the camera can see this. Um, this is it's a swag I got from an Avo event. Mm. You may say, what is this? Um, it is a travel humidor. And you can probably see if the camera, a uh, little hygrometer there. Um, but in true Avo fashion, it is a Bluetooth MP3 player. Oh, that's awesome. Right. So literally, you can... What's cool about this is that I unscrew this is you got a place to keep your cigars in. Nice. Right? And I got a Camacho in there. And then you have this piece where you can... You could actually put your humidification stuff in there. Nice. And then you put it on, and you have music on the go. And it uses Bluetooth. Very easy to hook up. I'm not going to put the Bluetooth on because it will probably screw the sound up. Um, and I got this at an Avo event. You know, I had an interesting discussion with a, a, a while ago with a guy named Dan Reeve. Who, who, he used to write for Cigar Explorer, and he is a... Um, he writes for Cigar Press. He does some very good work. We had a little bit of a disagreement. He was telling me... He kind of felt the Avo brand was was flat and dead, and I kind of took another approach, saying, you know, Avo gets a lot of. I always felt Avo from our website gets interest. I think we have people who are interested in Avos, but maybe it was more so from the limiteds. To be fair to Dan, you know, it was probably so. You know, now they've kind of gone ahead and they've they've resurrected all these other lines, and I'll tell you, they were giving the. You bought a box, you got one of these. That's (laughs) awesome. yeah, so yeah, Avo, I, they, yeah, they rebranded uh, or they repackaged, I should say, uh, their line with some nice new packaging. Yep. Their cigars, I've always enjoyed the Avo line of cigars we talked about on last yep. show, the show before that. Um, I think for traveling, having something like that is great. I can put some cigars in it, and then when I'm in my hotel room in the morning, I like to crank some tunes and get amped up. I was just traveling in Orlando. I had to give a, my talk was at like 9.45. So I'm getting ready in the morning. You know, I'm cranking some tunes, kind of getting in the zone and, and having a Bluetooth speaker be better. I take my phone and I do the, the life hacking thing where I put it inside of a cup. And if you put the speaker down inside of the cup, it amplifies I do that too the, yeah, the sound. So in the car. That's, that's what I was doing uh, in, my, in my hotel room. But, you know, having a speaker would be way better. Yeah, and your cigars are and when you have a smoking room and you're man, you have it with smoking yeah, room. And if you have a smoking room, that's right. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I was um like I said, I was I was pretty pleased to see that because it was um, you know, it like I said, it, it was some different swag that I got. Um now the box of cigars you may ask because I bought, um, you know, despite the fact Abba's did a great job with these um with these um repackaged cigars. Uh, the Stogie Geek and me grabbed a uh, a couple of boxes of a the couple of boxes. Uh, yeah, a couple of boxes of the um, Abba's Greatest Hits. Nice. Oh <laughs> yeah. yeah, you told me about that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Um, which to me, I've really been I've really been enjoying this. Um, and I said, you know what? I got now one of those boxes. I'm putting it in the humidor. It's just gonna be sealed. I don't know when I'll open it, right? But I have nice. another one I can just go through now. Awesome. Um, it, right before I got that box, I had smoked um, going backwards as I've been. I'm, I'm up to 2007. So I'm kind of like midway through the series. And I hit the Avo 2000, LE 2007 or the LE07, um, which I had never had this one before. Um, it's an unbanded cigar. So it didn't come banded. It's an Ecuadorian sun-grown wrapper. With Dominican binder and filler and a six by fifty four Toro, um, and they made this one for Abo's eighty first birthday, so it's it's eight years old already. It so um, this was one of the big surprises of the set, in my opinion. Um, it was um, it was just um, really really uh, a really good cigar. I can't say if it was better or worse than um, some of the other ones. Other than it had a great sweetness, it had a lot of classic Avo flavors, um, and it was real, real enjoyable. Um, it was definitely a box worthy cigar in my book. And like I said, it's one of right now of the ones I've gone through. It may be the second or third best one I've had. It, it was nice. really a good cigar. Um, I really like the. Um, I really obviously everyone knows I like the ten, and I'm very partial to the eleven as well. So this one's probably the next best one I've had. Cool. 
So definitely, if you haven't smoked that one, you know, and I'll say is if you check out some of these Avo Greatest Hits ones, um, if you know, if you if you feel like inclined to spend the money on it, it, it's it's a nice set to have, and there's some really interesting cigars you'll smoke. Yeah, I, we've both been loving that that set. Will, do we have a question? Yeah, we do. Um, and I was thinking about this one on the break. You know, uh, Willie Flores was actually, um, maybe it's not a name you've heard of. And I, I, had, I had heard him, but, you know, I didn't know a lot. Willie Flores was a real interesting talk tonight. Um, mm. And if you did miss that segment, go back and check it out from La Jolla Cigars. The question is, what state does Willie Flores hail from? And we Excellent. talked about it. So we you did. should be able to easily get that one. To send your answer to the show at stogiegeeks.com. That's the show at stogiegeeks.com. What are we giving away for a cigar? I've got, I've got another one of those three packs of um, – what were those three packs of the uh, Bellicosos? Oh, the, um, the, the uh, uh, La Roma de Cubas. Thank you. La Roma de yep. Cuba. Yes. The event-only ones, yes. So. The event-only ones. I've got one more of those, so – Get on that, because I, I got one left, one pack left. Three bellicosos and a smoke naked t-shirt. Send the right answer to the show at stogiegeeks.com. First one that answers correctly wins it, and we'll send it out. We've been doing yep. good with the contest. I'm very happy. Yeah, we've, we've got, got a good very, flow going now. We, yeah, no one's, um, it hasn't gone into the weekend yet. Yeah, but well, in you case know, you're listening and you don't know who's a winner, send your answer in right. anyway. You never keep, know. Keep sending the answers in, and we've been uh, done a great job of uh, sending out the contest um, prizes. And I think the key to that was to take me right out of the loop. Uh, I, I, I think if you say, just get me out of the loop, things things get done. <laughs> Listen, I'm out of the loop. Have, we, we have to thank our behind-the-scenes guys. <laughs> yes, Crawford, thanks to Chris. Chris, we're doing I mean, a these great guys job. keep us on our toes. That's right. So they, they really are the glue here. So thank you, guys. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for listening to the Stogie Geek Show. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Will, do we know have who the guest is next week? Jose Blanco. Oh, Jose Blanco. Yep. We'll be on. The, oh, always wonderful to talk to Jose. Can't wait. It's been a year since we talked to him too. I can't believe yeah, it. Yeah, it's gonna be great. Um, I'd love love his cigar. I gotta smoke more of his cigar. I gotta it's try and find epic some. Guest month. I think we have a big April's a month. Don't want to miss Stogie Geeks. We have some big names coming up. Awesome. Yep. Well, thanks, everyone. We'll see everyone next week where we're going to interview Jose Blanco, so make sure you tune in. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you on the next episode of The Stogie Geek Show.